Gotta get you looking your best. Whistle watch is, uh, is back. This is the big one you've all been talking about. If you want any advice or help, don't come to me. Mavanoi and Daffodil here. Who they think's gonna win? Tong Champlin? Who's Tong? Oh, Tong? Who's Tong? Masha, Masha. So, welcome back to Whistle Watch. And I know a few are very excited to see me back. Let's go meet them. Come on, girls. Hey, come on. Look how excited they are. Now let's get on with some Emirates Pans questions. Well, I've been away for a while, but the questions still keep on coming, so let's see what we got. And the question from Dewey is, red or brown sauce on the fry up? I tell you the key is, it all comes down to whether I have baked beans with it or not. If I have baked beans, I look for the uh, brown sauce. So I'd probably say on most occasions, brown. But fried egg sandwich, red sauce every time. Right, next one is from Johnny Doyle at IRL. So Johnny, I assume you're in Ireland. Any plans for a Nigel Owens movie? <laughs> yes, and Brad Pitt will be acting me. Why, you must be joking. Movie? Good question though. Right, ooh, cars, trucks, and ducks. Hmm, that's a good one. Sir or referee? Um, do you know what? For me, referee. Not like the beast called me in that epic South Africa, New Zealand game in 2013, where he was saying, uh, sorry, Mr. F, when I was giving my ticket off. Sorry, Mr. F, sorry, Mr. F. I said, you need to call me Mr. F. Just ref is fine. Uh, next one is from Elliot TH304, and he asks, how are the calves doing? Yeah, not too bad, Elliot, considering uh, I haven't been training much, to be honest. Oh, you mean those calves? Oh yeah, no, they're doing well. Can you see there? They're growing, plenty of rain, plenty of grass here in West Wales, so they're doing well. And the next one comes from Bocky Official. Are you and Jakob Piper friends? Yes, of course, be friends for many years. Good man, good referee. And the next one, the next question is from um, Lloyd Williams. And Lloyd asks, what are your thoughts about the quick recovery of Captain Alan Wynne Jones? And did you expect him to play, do you expect him to play in the opening test on the 24th against the world champions? I'm not surprised to be honest. When, I was surprised I suppose when they said that he could be fit. Um, but then, you know, when they said it was him, I, I wasn't surprised if anybody's gonna get fit uh, in, in, in that amount of time, it would be him. Um, and after coming on on Saturday, he really did show everybody there was nothing wrong with his shoulder, did he? Whether they'll pick him to start, I'm not quite sure, but he certainly will come on in that game if he doesn't start. Speaking of the Lions tour, it's whistle watch time. <whistles> I forgot the whistle. Okay, now time for your favorite part of the week, whistle watch. And uh, last week's game against the South African A side, uh, really did heighten the excitement ready for the series. But, as always, it wasn't without its incidents. So, let's get into the first one. And the first one, it comes from Julian Brammer. And he asks, if after Clerk was five foot 11, which he obviously isn't, and 16 stone, would he have been sent off for the challenge he was yellow carded for? And this is a very difficult one. Because of the way he went into the shoulder, there's no really direct contact with force to the head, and that's why the referee then brings it down from a red card to a yellow card. So it was a really tight decision. I would say it's one of those that's in between the both. I think if he had been bigger and 16 stone, um, but the same actions would have happened, it probably would have still resulted in, in a yellow card. And the next talking point was the Lewis Re Summit non-try. This is a very tough decision really, but because Lewis Reed Summit was tackled, he was outstretched, grounded the ball short, which was fine because that was in the action of being tackled. He then tried to reach again for the try line, and it looks like he was just short. If he'd touched the try line on that incident, 
it would have been a try because that was his second movement, which is allowed. But because he was short on the second movement, he then tried to reach again and maybe just did touch the line, but it was the third movement. The officials quite rightly so disallowed the try because it was classed a double movement. Next one comes from Alex Hudson. Are you for or against the captain's call or the captain's challenge at looking at decisions? Farrell was adamant they should have looked at the hit on Harris yesterday, but they ignored his request. It doesn't matter if you're the captain or not really. Any player can ask the referee in the right manner. Look, I, I thought it was a late hit there or I thought they knocked the ball on. In this incident, the officials probably would have been sweeping that up. So the TMO would have been looking at everything. Uh, they maybe did have a look at it and decide there was nothing to look, or they just may not have seen it on, on the replay. Um, it's very difficult to see, really, um, from the angles, if there actually was foul play. His elbow was certainly up. Whether it made contact, we don't really know. Lastly, this is the big one you've all been talking about. What a series. France against Australia decided in the last test, 33-30 win by Australia, clinching the series. Now, the incident where people have been talking about is that red card. Now, when you're on that field, you are making the decision with a huge amount of pressure on it. We don't have to relax at home, watching it 10, 12 times, pausing it, slowing it down. And whatever decision you make at home, it doesn't really matter for the game, but when you're on the field, it makes a huge difference. So we have to understand that. But what I think happened is, the hit is fair, it hits the player here, which is not illegal, and then the head of the French player comes over the shoulder of the tackler, rather than the shoulder of the tackler going into the head. And for that reason, my personal view on it, I would have given a yellow card, but it's easy for me to say here now in the cow shed rather than when you're out on the field. You can understand a red card. Personally, myself, I'd have opted for a yellow, but what do I know? That's our thought here on Whistle Watch. We'd love to see what you think, so comment below. Now, there's one thing I love more about being back home here at the farm is able to welcome my guests. And my guest this week is a very special guest. It's um, Welsh try scoring machine. Tong Champlin. Who's Tong? Oh, Who's Tong? Ting Tong. <laughs> I've never really been to a farm, so... No, I don't, you don't look the farming type. Were you, were you dressed to come here today as well? God, I wish I dressed down like you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my working clothes, that's why. Hey, tell me, Tom, what, what are, what's your experience of the um, of the Lions? Because you were picked in 2005 and 2009, weren't you? Yeah, look, great experiences, because, um, you know, off the back of a, a Grand Slam with Wales, there's always a... A little bit of that, you know you've played well and you'd obviously won the championships, so there'd be a few Welsh players in there. But to actually hear your name, you yeah. know, there's no better feeling. But I, I left just before the test because I had a bit of a dodgy knee. Um, but then I selected again in 2009 and just kept my shoulder. Cardiff Blues were playing, the Dragons think you refed. Um, Not my fault, was it? Yeah. yeah <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's... You played an advantage too long, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, and a week before we met up, I just skipped my shoulder, so couldn't make the tour. Uh, word on the street was I was going to be captain. Probably would have led him to a series victory. And oh, look at this one. I probably would have been a know, legend. Question of sport yeah. captain right you, you, now. Yeah, you would have been, and yeah. I think Hugo knows that. <laughs> <laughs> so look, good, good and bad. Mixed, mixed feelings of it, but. The main you thing know, is you were selected. Yeah, and I got the kit yeah, and I still wear yeah. it around town now. There's so, so many players are so unlucky, aren't they, before yeah. Lions tours. Anyway, big game ahead, but we've got a big game now as well. We've got a, a 30 seconds challenge coming up. Nigel Owens versus Tom Shanklin. 30 seconds, rugby edition. I hope there's no tackling in this, is there? How's your other guest? You can go first. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Are you right ready? Up for it? Yeah. Have we got a clock? Yeah. Ready? Clock on. Okay. Hit the drop goal um, for South Africa in the 1995 World Cup. George Stronsky. Yeah, um, something you're very good at. Um, Refereeing. Blow it a lot uh, during games. Refereeing, whistle. Uh, yep. Uh, referee, um, very arrogant, wears tight trousers, enjoys farming. Wayne Bat. <laughs> nice <Nigel> Lawrence. <laughs> you got it. Where Harlequins play. Stoop. Yeah. Uh, was a Lions captain. Now he's not the Lions captain. I bet he's gutted. Conor Murray. Yes. Uh, right, Nigel, hit me with it. Uh, position on the field or under the red light district? 
Okay. You're great. Uh, second best anthem after the Welsh one? Italian. No, near. Scottish. Close. No. French. No, yes, I said yes. What's it called? Yeah, go on. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, commentator that you work with? Um, Shane Williams. No. Sean Holly. No. Eddie Butler. No, yeah, Eddie Butler, yeah. Um, Centre, who thinks he's probably better than he was. Very lucky to get picked on the 2005-2009 Lions Tour. Jimmy Roberts. No. It's got to be. No, it's not. Tom Shanker. Yeah, correct. Um, I'm surprised you didn't know the Lama say. Yeah, I can I can hum it. Mm, uh, 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 uh. You see a cock roll then. You <laughs> <pain. But laughs> I think I think I was a little bit clearer, and shorter, and more direct. Um, probably should have been. Yeah, but I know you are not the brightest, so I had to <sighs> explain the answers a bit more to you because you wouldn't get the short ones. I don't think. Probably should have been a ref. I was that good at communicating? Well, I think I won. I think I probably won. Oh well. Let us know who you think won in the comments below. Right, it's prediction time now. Now in my bucket, I've got a green apple, which is obviously the spring box, and I've got a red apple, which is the lions. And I'm gonna ask Mavanoi and Daffodil here who they think is gonna win. So I'm gonna cut these apples up, make it a bit easier for them to, to, to eat, and then we'll see which, which one they choose. Mm. She went for the green. Interesting. Well, the cows think it's going to be a spring box win. Who do you think is going to win? I think it's going to be the lions. What do you think? Let us know. And that's it for Whistle Watch this week, but join us next week when we will round up all the rugby from next weekend's action. The good, and maybe the bad. Don't forget to comment below, hit the notifications, and don't forget to like. Hi, I'm Rona Lloyd. I'm Alessi Russo. And this is Sevens versus Football. Active, hands on, big patient, no ransom. I don't care about he say, she say. It's a big no way if it ain't my way. Active, hands on, wanna be patient, no ransom. Here we are. Ah, does that count? Here goes nothing. I don't care about he say, she say. It's a big no way if it ain't my way.